In order to perform a Bayesian analysis, you must construct a prior distribution for your parameters. In their book on Bayesian data analysis, Andrew Gelman and his co-authors suggest a couple of interpretations for prior distributions. First, for the population interpretation, our parameter values come from a population. In other words, there really is a distribution producing the values of our parameter. For example, a physical process may produce values of the parameter. Secondly, and most commonly, is the state of knowledge interpretation, in which the prior distribution quantifies our beliefs or knowledge about the behavior of the parameter. There are various ways to partition prior distributions, and we're going to talk about several of them. One partition is subjective versus objective. A subjective prior is a prior distribution that is constructed based on your beliefs about the behavior of the parameter. This essentially corresponds to the state of knowledge interpretation. On the other hand, we have the objective prior. An objective prior is a prior that attempts to minimize personal beliefs in determining the prior. Often, these are chosen in a systematic way and may not consider any prior information. Another partition of prior distributions is informative prior distributions versus non-informative prior distributions. An informative prior distribution attempts to formally quantify what is known about the parameter so that the posterior is as precise as possible. A non-informative prior attempts to be intentionally vague so that the prior's impact on the posterior is minimal. It's similar in spirit to an objective prior, but it is probably not going to be chosen systematically. For a non-informative prior, the goal is to essentially let the data have the most say in determining the posterior distribution. One can also make a distinction between a proper prior distribution and an improper prior distribution. A proper prior distribution is really just a valid statistical distribution. If it's a PMF, the sum of the probabilities over the support is 1. If it's a PDF, the density is always non-negative and the integral over the support is also equal to 1. An improper prior isn't a distribution. It's simply a function of the parameter. The reason it's not a distribution is because the sum or integral of the function over the support doesn't equal 1. My recommendation is to never use an improper prior. The danger is that the posterior won't be a valid distribution. It won't integrate to 1, or the sum over its support will also not equal 1. And you can almost always find a proper prior distribution that's similarly vague, so there's no real benefit in using an improper prior. I do have to admit that there are some improper priors that are commonly used. A well-known example is that if our data are distributed normal theta sigma squared, with theta being known, an improper prior for sigma squared equal to 1 over sigma squared will result in a valid posterior distribution for sigma squared. The prior distribution doesn't integrate to 1, but the posterior distribution will be valid. Another way of dividing prior distributions is conjugate versus non-conjugate. Conjugate priors are perhaps the best-known class of prior distributions. A conjugate prior distribution is one for which a specific combination of data and prior distributions always results in the posterior distribution having the same form as the prior distribution. Note that these are generic distributions, like a normal mu sigma squared distribution, not a specific case like a normal 0, 1. One of the best-known examples is that if you have a general binomial data distribution, and a general beta prior distribution for the probability of success for the binomial, then the resulting posterior distribution will also be a beta distribution with updated parameter values. A key aspect of any prior distribution is that a prior distribution should include all possible values of the parameter. Don't stress too much about centering the prior distribution exactly at the true value of the parameter. As long as the prior isn't unreasonably strong, the data should far outweigh the prior in determining the posterior distribution. You may also hear the term hyperparameter when talking about prior distributions. The hyperparameters are simply the parameters of your prior. In fact, when you are constructing hierarchical models, your hyperparameters will also have distributions, which will allow you to pool information in helpful ways.